All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people just like you, just like me. Okay, quick promo for this band. This is grand. Uh, really good. I said, I think last fall, I thought this sounded like a cross between Toto and Cutting Crew. I mean, it's not exactly that, but when you hear it, you'll get the picture. It is more pop than a lot of things that I promote on here. So if you like good melodies and a guy who has a really high vocal range, check out Grand, courtesy of Frontiers Music. Um, you know what else is Grand? <laughs> Another rock and roll argument between David Gilmore and Roger Waters. Um, everyone's sending me messages like, guess there's not going to be a there's never going to be a Pink Floyd reunion with Waters and Gilmore at this stage. No way. Hell would have to freeze over. Worse than what it did when the Eagles got back together. Much worse. Um, anyway, uh, Roger Waters has uh, hit back against uh, David Gilmore and his wife, who the other day were calling Roger every name in the book. And most of it was based on politics and a... Roger is a Putin apologist because he sees both sides of this argument. And most people here in the United States, they, they just hear about how Putin is very aggressive and doing all these bad things. And they don't know about the Donbass region. They don't know about the coup in 2014. They don't know about anything like that because the news media here doesn't talk about it. And, you know, um, David Gilmour apparently isn't interested in that. And Roger Waters, you know, he went on CNN, tried to explain it. And then the next day around the water cooler, everybody is trashing Roger Waters as some kind of a Putin apologist and crazy man and doesn't understand uh, the world and yada, yada. So anyway, um, Roger Waters has uh, struck back and he's taken a different approach. He's critiquing these guys as musicians, as artists, as songwriters more than anything else. I would say um, you can't really argue that David Gilmour isn't a brilliant guitarist. Uh, I mean, my favorite guitar solo of all time remains to this day is the solo he does Uncomfortably Numb. It's just mind boggling how good that solo is. And it's emotional. Um, there's not any wasted time on guitar. It's just all really powerful and really moving. Um, that's my humble opinion, but I mean, you may have your own favorite guitar solo, but that's mine. It's been that way for a long time. Um, anyway, getting back to Roger Waters, talking about the late, great Rick Wright. Again, I think this is a mistake, what he's doing here and talking about David Gilmore um, saying they have no ideas, not a single one. They never have, and that drives them crazy. So Roger basically is coming out saying, look, I wrote all this stuff, the wall, that's me. <laughs> Wish you were here. That was me. Um, you know, dark side, that's all me. And uh, obviously the final cut really definitely was all uh, Roger. I don't even know if Gilmore gets any credits on that album. I think he might on the music end of things or like one track. Um, but look, I think his approach here to, to hit back, I understand why he's hitting back, but maybe he should have hit back on the uh, political side of things rather than going after David Gilmore as a writer now, again, the critics, I think in the old days, they might do some revision though, because they're on team David now. Um, but the critics did not like a momentary lapse of reason. I think they liked the division bell a little bit more, but they did not like a momentary lapse. Whereas um, the wall and the final cut and pretty much all of the Waters albums were praised by rock music critics fairly universally. You didn't get a lot of argument. You had a lot of people that were like, hey, 
this stuff is just getting too weird for me. And these songs, you know, they go together, but you know, and obviously the old thing was you had to um, be somewhat intoxicated somehow uh, self-medicated in order to really enjoy Pink Floyd music, uh, especially during the, the Roger Waters years. Um, <laughs> that, that helped it make sense apparently. So Waters goes on to talk about how he's uh, re-recording The Dark Side of the Moon. He says, let's get rid of all this we crap, referring to Gilmore and Wright and maybe even Nick Mason, I'm not sure. I know he and Nick Mason, I think, are on good terms. So who knows, right? Um, <laughs> see, Nick Mason just wanted to work with anybody. I'll work with either one of these guys. I mean, he was cheerleading for a few years about an actual Pink Floyd reunion, obviously without Rick Wright, because he's no longer here, but um, that's not gonna happen. Waters goes on to say, of course, we were a band there were four of us we all contributed but it's my project and i wrote it so blah that's what he says blah <laughs> as for what fans can expect from the re-recorded uh the dark side of the moon um the author of this article apparently got to hear some of it and shared some insight so apparently it's already in the can uh while he says parts are very good indeed he notes but surprisingly, Waters seems to have decided that what was wrong with the original album's beautiful instrumental tracks was that they didn't have Waters talking all over them. Now they do. Ooh, ouch. All right. So um, spoken word, maybe in the spoken word category, this will win a Grammy <laughs> for the re-recording of Dark Side of the Moon, Roger Waters. And then he gets up there and he gives this sprawling speech about how nobody in the building understands foreign policy, and he would be right. Um, is Roger doing this just to get attention to his for his cause? Yeah, I mean, he said so in other interviews. The music is a vehicle to get people to pay attention to what's going on in the world. And again, there are a lot of issues, you know, or a bunch of things that Roger Waters says that I don't agree with. Uh, on the bigger, more important issue about war and peace and foreign policy and empire and America just running around the world doing what it wants to do. And when someone else, you know, sticks, puffs out their chest a little bit and says, you know what, I don't want all these countries to line up on our border and uh, amass a large amount of military hardware or build new military bases. I We don't want that in our country. That's Russia right now. And most people in the United States, they don't wanna hear it. They're thinking old Soviet Union, KGB, that's what they're thinking. Putin used to be KGB, right? So can't trust them. Okay, can, who can you trust? Name a leader around the world that you can trust. Joe Biden? <laughs> that's just... Uh, do a just do a quick a b comparison so anyway folks um this argument will probably go on but uh it's more i think beneficial for roger waters than david gilmore to be involved in this uh i don't think roger waters uh intellectually is going to get uh beaten by david gilmore i just don't think so but when it comes to music, I think Roger should tread a little lighter because there are Pink Floyd fans that love David Gilmore, obviously, and that believe that Gilmore can write some good songs and also is just an amazing, legendary guitarist. And he is, 100%. But with that said, I think there are things that are more important than being a great guitarist. I mean, humanity, very important, human rights, very important, self-determination, all these issues that people just kind of zone out about because it's not directly related to the music. Okay, I get it. And that's why I do this channel because I tend to do things a little bit differently than the rest of the people that post videos and just talk about one song or they, you know, reminisce about 1985, how great it was. 
yeah, I know that stuff already. I can, I could do a reminiscing channel, but it's kind of Captain Obvious stuff, you know? It's like, hey, this band had a hit song in 1985. Well, yeah, too bad it's not played on the radio anymore, you know? <laughs> All right, folks, um, just kind of rambling. It's uh, Saturday for you. Here's Grand, and uh, these guys kind of ramble on for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so, and I'm thinking you're going to like this. It's good stuff, and uh, it's well-produced, well-put-together, well-written, good songwriting. Um, not for everybody, but, uh, you know, I tend to cover a lot of different styles, and uh, I will be back. So hang in there. More to come. Ta-ta.